So I'm Leilani, I'm a fifth year PhD student here in CSAIL. I work on explanatory artificial intelligence. I'm interested in processes and methods to make sure that machines can explain themselves, especially when they get into errors. And my long-term research is that all machines, all processes, even opaque processes like machine learning systems, will have the ability to explain themselves and they can be challenged in an adversarial proceeding if they do something wrong. And also they'll be able to communicate with people. So when we have humans and machines working on tasks together, they'll be able to communicate in a common language. So I'm sort of at the last stages of my PhD research and I'm looking to evaluate the methods I've been building for the last couple years. So we hired on a Europe to do some simulations for the project and then work on incorporating my methods into the simulation to prove that it's accurate, to prove that it sort of works in this environment. Right, so you have a vision system that basically sees that and then you have some car that's at some, you know, angle here and if it's at enough of an angle you basically want sort of the brakes engaged as well as the gas mm -hmm. and so we want them to basically have some sort of like conversation back and forth very quickly because they're never supposed to be on at the same time and right. so if you were going to have a rule-based system it would say okay this is like absolutely wrong mm -hmm. but if you have this sort of conversation between parts and maybe even a planner that it should come up with, yeah, you have to hold both of them and then you can sort of proceed forward once this turns green. Once we pick the simulation, I can see like how verbose my explanation will be because, you know, you don't want something that's like too long and too hard to process if you're making this sort of real-time decision. Can a week be good for you? 11 to 12 on, on Wednesdays? Yeah. Yeah, works for me. My name is Divya Shanmugam and I am a PhD student in the Clinical and Applied Machine Learning Group. The lab that I'm in broadly focuses on machine learning and healthcare, but what I'm excited about is machine learning on unreliable data. So what is the best you can do with data sets that um, are maybe not labeled correctly or have noise in their features or that kind of thing. So those are the problems that I focus on. I'm sort of a night person and so the mornings are a lot of paper reading and slower tasks and then eventually like the afternoon is filled with meetings or more coding. There's an organization in the department for the graduate women in course six. Um, it's called GW6 and one of the events that it focused on running this year uh, was a summit um, to celebrate the women in academia in the department and connect people across years. I worked with a set of women across years to put it together. So we're doing a walkthrough of the building before the event and we're just trying to make sure that everything we think is going to be there is there uh, and just previewing what the event might look like. Hi, my name is Harini, and my research focuses on the ways that machine learning tools interact with people. So this can mean anything from the ways that people are involved in the data collection process and how that can lead to negative consequences, to the ways that we can build machine learning tools to better serve end users. Natalie is another PhD student in computer science. 
Natalie and I have actually worked together on several projects and it's really great to have someone to collaborate with. Some of the things that we work on are related to our research and others are related to uh, side projects that we're both interested in. So something that we've both been working on over the past year is this YouTube series called ML Tidbits. What exactly people mean when they talk about false positives or false negatives or true positives or true negatives. The goal is to teach machine learning concepts in a really accessible way that's um, understandable to a broad audience. There are a lot of talks that happen around CSAIL and it's really nice to be able to go to these because they're often from areas that you don't necessarily encounter them in your own everyday research. So it's a nice way to break up the normal stuff that we do every day and learn about research that's happening both from students here at MIT, from students elsewhere who are visiting, from other faculty in other departments. So the talk that we went to on data and feminism was by Catherine D'Agnazio, who's a new professor in the urban planning department. And her research is also really related to computer science and data science. So that was really interesting for me to see the ways that computer science and the things that I'm doing might apply to other fields and other applications. Intellectual history that we inherit today and that we can draw from There are a lot of fun social gatherings here in Seasale, so one of the favorite things that we do is Muffin Monday. At 5 p.m. on Mondays, we go up to the top floor and basically any Seasale graduate student can have a free baked good um, and sort of chat with friends and things like that. Muffin Monday is awesome. People come from all around Stata to get these muffins. Free food events are sort of a staple of graduate student culture in the department. It's like a good place to spend 10 to 15 minutes catching up with people who aren't necessarily on your floor or in your research area, and the pastries are pretty good. In our group, we have group meeting every week, and we order lunch, and usually one or two people talk about something they've been working on or uh, give a talk if they're trying to practice a talk. Sometimes people talk about preliminary ideas or go through things on the whiteboard, so it's basically an opportunity for people to bounce ideas off of others in the group and get feedback on things that they're working on and so it's nice to get perspective on the thing that you're working on from a range of people with different backgrounds and different expertises. So let's start with this project, which is about data augmentation to help with one-shot medical image segmentation. Now, in this particular project, the medical images that we're looking at are magnetic resonance images, or MRIs. If you've never seen one before, this is what they look like. Nowadays, there's no in vivo objective biomarker for diagnosis. Well, photons can actually provide an alternative architecture for quantum computing. You have a lot of data, extracting useful information will take a lot of human hours. The silicon photonics is the most comp compatible, so we don't have to reinvent the wheel. Automation, sensors everywhere, no people on the floor. So if something breaks, we need to find out really quickly. This takes the output of some opaque mechanism, which could be anything from the vision system of a car or possibly a planner of a vehicle that may be proprietary because um, the company wants to keep that secret. And then this reasonableness monitor then provides an, an output of both a judgment, so it says whether the intended behavior is reasonable or not, and also provides an explanation of why.
Obviously being at MIT and in CSAIL, there's a lot of pressure, but I've been able to make a lot of great friends. And what's nice about being a graduate student is you have a very flexible schedule. And I really love coffee, so I try and take a coffee break um, every few days and go out with friends. So Harini and Divya and I will occasionally go and get coffee and just chat about things. It's sort of like a nice excuse to get out of lab and to not only update your friends about like research, but also your life surrounding that research and sort of maintain that support network because I think graduate school can be isolating sometimes. And so having those moments where you're connecting with friends can be really nice. I also find CSAIL to be very collaborative, so at other universities I've been or in other workplaces, I would work mainly in isolation, but what's nice about being here is I can you know, just turn my head and ask my colleague a question and people are always willing to help and chat about research and collaborate and it's just a very nice welcoming environment.